اللهم يا من جعلت السحر ابتلاء فأنت برحمتك لن تنسانا وأنت جل جلالك الذي خلقت له الدواء فلكل داء دواء ولكل ابتلاء شفاء ولا سحر الحمد لله ولي المتقين حق من عبر وأكرم من صول والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء سراج المنير أما بعد Ahimba Fila, here there is a brother who's been suffering a lot with wasworse and with loads of problems in his life. Humayun, can you tell me when did your problem started exactly? It's been about two years now since the coronavirus. Right. Yeah, well, it's just been very difficult for me because I was always working, driving, like, just confident with everything, like just normal day-to-day life. And then slowly, I just like started getting strange, like was was uh, like, like uh, with strange thoughts. And then... What are these I, thoughts you've been getting, the strange thoughts? Can you elaborate more? Yeah, I was getting like thoughts, like uh, when when I go to pray Salah or when I go make wudu, I... I would repeat, I'd keep doubting, is my ablution done. Right. I would always, I would keep repeating, like, obsessively, like, and I kept, I, I developed, like, OCD, like, symptoms, mm. Mm. and then um, I kept repeating the same prayer, like, whenever I would always go want to go out with my friends, I would get late, and they would get annoyed at me, because I'd be repeating the prayer more than one time, and I'd spend, like, half an hour doing just a five minute prayer mm. like it, it would take me long Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, says in the one hadith very clear hadith he says do you know who are the transgressors he says the transgressors are those who repeat and repeat making their wudu and those yeah. who repeat salahs so if you keep on repeating salah there's no need of you repeating your salah there's no need of you repeating the wudu you make the wudu and straight away you move forward you leave the place because in the salah and in the wudu there's two shaitan who comes and gives waswas one is called khanzab the other one is called walahan yeah. they come and bombard you with thoughts and on top of it you have qareen who gives you thoughts generally normal thoughts so the first thoughts the one which are destroying you is the salah. You say the salah. The salah, you struggle. And the, and the wudu, you struggle. Yeah. What else you struggle before you start looking for solutions? What, what else do you struggle from there? Oh, yeah. So it got more severe where I was struggling to drive. Like whenever I used to drive to work or go out, I was always normal like driving normally and then i used to get these thoughts like something whispering to my in my brain and making me say like what if always what if questions like are you, are you sure you haven't hit someone are you sure you haven't like i'll always get like kind of like harm what, you while know, like, you while while you're driving isn't it yeah so whenever i used to always go over the speed bumps or like the cab or even when i'm sitting with my friend in the car I'd be asking them, I'd be like, oh, that was just, the they'd be like, don't worry, you haven't hit anyone. And something in my brain would make me doubt. And I'd always check the mirrors obsessively, like, because I was scared of the fall. Like, I'd, I'm not someone violent or anything, so I, I wouldn't want to harm anyone. Then my confidence just gradually decreased where I just stopped driving. Like, I sold my car, like, because of the, this severe waswasa problem. So the main was that you may think that you've hit somebody or did you, have you ever thought that you're going to have accident or anything like that? Yeah, yeah. Like pre, like before it, it, anything even happens. So I would always get this thought, like what if this happens, like the worst case scenario. And then, yes, yeah, so after that, I sold my car. I started riding my bike to work. This one, is it when you started going in the car or before you even go in the car? That's why. You feeling like that? It would be like as soon as I start driving, like just when I'm as soon as I I'm driving, not like just before the car. Like I would 
worry about and then eventually it became really severe where even before me going in the car i'll be worrying about these thoughts so, so then you, I you get the driving. thoughts before you even going inside the car yeah now when you go inside the car what happens I would always like, you know, like the handbrake, whenever I used to put the handbrake off, I mean, up to stop the car, I'd get this thought of like me imagining the car rolling, even though I'm stood like the car yeah. on yeah. standby. Yeah. I would get the thought of it rolling back. And what if I hit someone? Like I'd always get these type of harm thoughts. Mm. And then I, I started speaking to a psychiatrist, like a psychologist about it. And they were trying to help me with the, uh, like by doing like talking therapy and such, uh, where I started speaking and it wasn't really helping. Like the therapy didn't help at all. Like really, like I was still scared to like drive and stuff uh, like alone. Before I could drive alone, I could go to like different cities I would even go to Manchester, Birmingham, wherever, like just normal. And then, yeah, I just started riding my bike after I got these thoughts. And then I st started getting these thoughts even while I ride my bike. So it just got worse and worse where I would go to work, like ride on my bike. And then I still start getting this harm type of thoughts even while I'm riding my bike. And every time I'll ride my bike, I'll be stop. I'll look behind me to check if someone's harmed, even though nothing's happened. With your I'll bike, you, you may think that so. With your bike, you're harming somebody, or you've kicked, you yeah. accidentally hit someone yeah. with your bike. Yeah. So yeah. something would be messing with my head, and then um, I stopped riding my bike. I started walking, and same thoughts were happening while I was walking. To what where? thoughts again now? Is gradually taking you to where it wants, isn't it? Yeah, it, like I started. I was walking to work, and I was getting the thought. I'd look behind me. Have I harmed someone? I'd always get this was was like of so me. You like, get the thought of I've harming got... somebody. How? In which way? You've harmed. Now you're walking, but you're still getting the same thought that you've harmed somebody. Now, yeah. what, comes, what sort of harm you think you're like, getting? Like I'd get the thought of me. Um, with my bike, it would be like running into someone with the bike, like hit, hitting the person with the bike. Right. With the, with my when I start walking, I'll get the thought of me like just harming someone, like by pushing them or or kicking them or like just any type stabbing of stabbing them. Not not stabbing, not really stabbing. It would be more about like. I'll just get thoughts like, what if I've soft side, someone? the soft side of harm, isn't it? Yeah, like, like, like I'll get the thought of like kicking, pushing, like someone. What if I've pushed someone in front of a car, stuff like that? Or, or and then I'd always keep checking behind me. And then I told my manager and work, I was like, I'm not feeling well. I've, my my OCD is getting worse because because she knew that I've got OCD. And then when I used to go to work. I'd, while I'm working, I'll be struggling to function like mentally because I'll be getting this constant was was about uh, what if I've harmed someone. And then I'd literally say to my colleagues, or oh, um, can I just can I just uh, get some fresh air for a minute? But really not to get fresh air, I'd be checking if someone's harmed. So I'd literally go outside. So, so you should you go you go outside of the perimeter or premises and then you look outside if someone is harmed. Yeah, so I'll check the road if someone harmed because something would be whispering. That you, you, you have harmed that person. I'd get the thought, yeah, like what if you, what if there's a harmed person harmed outside, and I wouldn't be able to focus on my job because of these thoughts. But it's totally against who I am as a person. Like I'm, I'm not what what I think. You know what I mean? Like I don't think. Now, like, now af no after that. You walking started from Salah, car, bicycle, walking. All these you're in trouble, getting thoughts. Now, yeah. what next? Did you stop your work? I stopped working. I I was doing like a um, apprenticeship, like training job. So I used to work as a, a receptionist, and then I 
I really enjoyed my work and stuff. And then I was getting late for work always because of my hand washing. I was always washing my hand. Um, when I used the toilet, I'd be spending time cleaning myself. So I'd be obsessively cleaning. Like if I, if uh, I'd always feel my hands are dirty. So I'd always go and wash my hand. Again and again and again and again. Yeah. Right. So if I like touch a door handle, I'd feel dirty. So I'd always, I bought a hand sanitizer. I'd always hand sanitize my hand because I felt dirty and it'd be finished. I'd be finishing the hand sanitizer mm -hmm. within one week. And then literally um, after that, um, I went to, um, I stopped working because I just couldn't, I was getting late for work a lot of times. I was getting, my colleagues were saying, you could, you've got to be on time next time. Um, and I was like, oh, I'm sorry, but like, I didn't, I didn't mean to be late to work. You know what I mean? It was because of my OCD symptoms were getting worse and worse to a point where I was getting late for work always. And then eventually I just stopped going to work. I said that. And have, I you, have you work. ever, uh, when you get these thoughts, have you ever said, A'udhu Billah Min Shaitan Rajim or read Surah Al Nas? Have you ever done that? Was yeah, Allah... I used to, I used to read like Astaghfirullah, like I'd say, or no, like no, no, Aaudh Billah Min Shaitan Rajim. Have you said that? Not Astaghfirullah. Aaudh Billah. Yeah, sometimes I'll say it, not always. Yes, you need, you need, because Allah says, "Wa imma yanzaghna kama min al-shaytan unazghun fasta'idu billah inna hu huwa al-sami'u alim." When the thoughts of Shaitan comes to you, the evil thoughts of Shaitan comes to the mind. You seek refuge towards Allah, and He's the one who hears. Inna hu huwa al-sami'u alim. He's the one who hears any everything, and Allah says again in Surah Al-Qaf, "وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ وَنَعْلَمُ مَا تُوَسُّسُ بِهِ نَفْسِ." He's created man, and he knows what thoughts come into his head. The ulama, the people of knowledge, said that whatever comes into our head, we have no control, but we have control of what is in our head. Now, if you get these thoughts and you keep on saying "Astaghfirullah," that's not correct. For example, now you had a car, okay, and you drive the car, and the car is a diesel, and you keep on putting petrol. Is the car going to function? No. That's correct because you need to put diesel. Do you understand? Yeah. For the car to eventually run properly, because straight away when you start putting diesel, and then after some time, when the diesel finish and you start putting petrol, you'll having problems. Does that make sense? The car will, yeah. will uh, break down. This is exactly with your case. You have to say every time you get these thoughts, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. The more you repeat, the more they will go away. Does that make sense? Yeah. You, do you understand? Yeah. So these are the thoughts of Shaitan. Now look at look at yourself. They derived you from where? From Salah? But you're still praying at the moment. Alhamdulillah, isn't it? You work, you work, you work from car, car to bicycle, bicycle to walking, walking to work, stop work, you are home. Now, at home, there must be more at home you're doing because they don't know how to stop. The shaitan doesn't know how to stop. Tell me at home now, how do you feel? Yeah, I was saying, um, I, I started being very anxious and scared to be at alone. Home. Yeah, so uh, like... Now, yeah. after you've stopped work, you stop everything. Now at home you started feeling anxious and scared being alone. Yeah. So I'd always be scared like because I'd keep getting these thoughts even while I'm home. So like I'll get the thoughts like are you sure you haven't harmed someone? Even when I'm at home I'd get the thought. And then what happens? What so, do you do after that? Me. So I'd like um, I'd start checking. Like again, like it'd be checking because I'd be there, I'd get Im images in my head of like injured people. Or, and you like, go out. Yeah, I'd me I'd get my me and my parents. I'd go because I'd be alone. So I'd be scared to go alone. I'd make my mom and dad. Is it during the day or the night? Mainly during the night. It doesn't. It doesn't really happen during the daytime. What time in the night? So you get go out with your parents. Yes. Yeah, so like. It'd be like uh, before I go to sleep. Two o'clock, so one o'clock, like, three o'clock. No, no, not that late. More like like uh, eleven o'clock, ten o'clock. 
Okay, like so you, you get the thoughts that someone is harmed outside, so you go and look outside with your parents. Yes, yes. So I'd be checking, is someone harmed? I'd get in my head, I'd get like an imagination, like a thought of like injured person or what if there's an injured person or Allah's going to punish you, this, that, like trying to scare me. Mm. And then and then I'd be like, oh, I haven't done anything. But then even though I'd like, it'd be very hard for me not to check. And then I, that's what I used to speak to my therapist about, um, that I keep getting these thoughts and that. So um, after that, like, basically, I'm always scared to be alone at home because of these obsessive thoughts. And not just that, like, I'd get thoughts, like, against against the Quran. So I started getting thoughts against the Quran. Bef years ago, I'd always read the Quran like normal like I had like an Arabic teacher I was always reading normal and then for the past two years um, basically like I started getting thoughts against the Quran like like kufr thoughts so I mm -hmm. always get thoughts which are against Islam where what do, to do would, with the Quran so I'd get thoughts to be disobeying the Quran so mm -hmm. I'd be like like thoughts like stop like i feel sick even talking about it yeah it's fine but like i'd get thoughts like to urinate on the, mm, the, the, yeah. the, the this shape that, and that's not me shape like i know i know that i know very well that's not you that's not that's, that's, not me that's in itself is a belief that you're holding tight that you're not doing this action does that make sense yeah that's not me yeah, yeah. so I always tell myself I'm not my thoughts, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. I won't be held accountable for just having these evil thoughts. Mm, so correct. I always remind but, myself. But you will, only, you will only be held accountable according to the hadith of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, my ummah will be forgiven unless their thoughts, the thoughts, what case them come to their heart, mind, they talk about it or they take, they make it an action. So, yes, when so you that's why I was saying I don't, I feel sick even talking about it yeah that, that and let, now you, you are making an action for example the thoughts of wudu and those these are actions you they're oh. made they're driving so these ones you will be held accountable if you're not stopping yourself and the way to stop is say billahi shaitan rajim, frequently constantly until you will win and surah nas surah nas yeah yeah, I remember you told me you used to get thoughts of the beans that there's magic in the beans and you go and check in the beans. Can you elaborate more about this? Yeah, like Stockholm, like I I started for the past day. Um, so basically I went to my my parents' country. So I, I went to Bangladesh. Right. Last last year. So like last year, at the start of last year. And then when I came, um, I was like, I wasn't as like suffering as much as I am now to last year. So I went to Bangladesh. They went to take me for treatment. But but in like countries like Bangladesh, India, they 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 do stuff which is shirk. That's so, correct. So basically, I my my parents would take me to this this uh, sheikh, but I don't really think he's a sheikh. He's a pandit. Because, pandit. Yeah, so basically he would this shit, he would wear like a hat like the uh, like you, but he would communicate with Jin. So he, they took me to this uh, sheikh, and basically he said, Oh, he asked me for my name, and he asked me for my mom and dad's name, and then he showed me this kind of book with like letters on it, and he was telling me, Oh, pick one, and I was like, I was thinking, what's this all about? Like, but my dad and mom just said, just pick one. And then he picked it and then he went, he went to a page. He went to a certain page of that book based on which one I picked. And then he was like reading something in Urdu, like uh, um, the Pakistani language. And then he was like saying, oh, the, this son is suffering from Sihir. This that like acting like he's like psychic or something like he mm -hmm. he's like some astrologer or something the way yeah. he was acting yeah he's a like from magic powers and then and then I was just like saying okay I I kind of thought I had it anyway because of how much my mindset changed 
So anyway, after that, you know what he done? He he tells me to come next time. He gave me tawis to wear on my neck. Mm-hmm. He t- he gave me a uh, mustard oil to put on all over my body, and then um, what is it? He told me to come back next week or something with my father, mm-hmm. and he done some sort of ritual with like a prayer mat. He told me to sit on a prayer mat, and he was like cutting like fake fakely like like cutting with the scissors around the 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 prayer mat i don't know why and he was like reciting stuff and then he was reading and then he told me to he was reading stuff and then he put a tawis on my chest like he told me to lie down on the sofa he put a tawis on my chest and he's reciting stuff and he was like cutting thread around my body like they're like I don't know why I've, I've never seen this but basically after that he told me to uh, blow in a bottle not blow uh, breathe uh, breathe or blow in a bottle three, 11 times 11 times so after he recited stuff and then he closed the bottle and he started shaking like like a like an actor on the floor like and then I I didn't feel anything leave me so, but because I was very, I felt like I was brainwashed. Like I didn't really think is it true or not. Like he, I thought that he captured the gin in a bottle. But I didn't feel anything leave my body, and till that day after that, it got worse and worse. It didn't, my situation didn't improve. Because, they because started, what happened is your parents took you to a magician. That's a magician. He communicates with gin. Yes, that's why. So he did magic for on you. So tell me but about they, your situation. Say, it was. Yeah, so what, what they say in Bangladesh, though, they say, oh, there's Muslim jinns. Not all jinns are bad. Uh, you can there's nothing. Look, look, okay, there is Muslim jinns, there's Jewish jinn, there's Christian jinn. But you're not supposed to communicate with these jinns. Yeah. Understand? There's like, Muslim jinn, there's Buddhist jinn, there's Christian jinn. There's all sorts of jinn. There's jinn, Bangladeshi jinn, Pakistani jinn, Yemeni jinn, yeah. Saudi jinn. But you are not supposed to communicate with these jinns. You have to leave them to their world. Yeah, like we're not we're not Prophet Suleiman. No, and it's then, not. It's not about being Prophet Suleiman. It's about being living to their world, and we live in our world. We're sacred yes. creation. Yes. Yeah. So basically, after that, Sheikh. Um, the, whatever your dad, your dad, when he told me that you get thoughts in the night, you wake up and start thinking that there's black magic in the bin and the other bin and the other bin. Is that the case or is it a different case? No, no, not, not about black magic. Yeah. I would get thoughts of the Quran. It would always be about the Quran. Being in the bin. Yeah. So I'd get the swaswasa and imagination of it go putting it in the bin but then every time i check there's nothing there so you so, get thoughts that to put it in the bin and yeah you, and go you go and check it and so there's nothing yeah. there when you check it yeah all right i understand now like imagination i'll get right. imagine not just thoughts i'll get imagination of that it that is there yeah like i'll get a visualization of the quran stuff for land and mm-hmm. every time i go like at nothing's there but the people would think like is he mental but it, there's a reason why i'm checking what times are there. these in the what times are these because your dad told me it's nights night yeah what, what time in the night? night like 10 o'clock 11 o'clock okay people see you you're, you're checking things in the bin yeah uh, people would check and then people would see and they'd be looking at me and then i wouldn't feel ashamed because i know i'm not well so I'd say to my dad, uh, let them look like, and they wouldn't say anything. Because and it's then, your own bin, isn't it? Or, or do you you look at other people being or it's your own bin? I look in all ours and others as well. Or other bins, or uh, okay. So, so basically, um, after that, like, um, do you go do you go in their house and knock, or the bins will be outside? You outside, not knock on the no, no. I wouldn't knock. It would just right. be outside. And then I'd check, and then my dad would tell people if they're walking on the streets, he'd say, "Oh my, he's not well." Like just so, because they, they'd be thinking, "Why is he looking in the?" But it, it's it was very difficult for me. Like it's the most difficult 
like test for me so far mm -hmm. i'd say yeah, ask allah to make it easy for you now we we will close it here today inshallah and we'll see if we can do it again and we carry on from here but my advice is you that you should keep dua make dua frequently and always say a'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim don't stop that astaghfirullah is okay but for this to be tackled is a'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim and surah nas read a lot of surah nas i read surah bakara as well yeah that's very good but surah nas every time these thoughts comes you keep on repeating surah nas and and you can even go to a length and blow on your left hand side okay yeah i do that before praying i do, i blow on my left shoulder yeah in the prayers that in the prayers but i'm saying when you are alive when you're like now and you get these thoughts you, you can just, do that anytime yeah but yeah, anytime blow on your left hand side and inshallah you will be better inshallah ask allah to make it easy for you and remove these evil thoughts and ask allah to make it to make it easy for every human being who is suffering with these thoughts and any other type of demonic possession and sihr abu yahya from the ruqya talk wa akhiru da'wana wa salamun ala al-mursalin walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen hatta yatabayyana lahum annahu al-haq